Hello, hello, hello. Just bear with me a second while I get myself set up. And do a quick refresh. And why am I out of focus? All right, let's just set that up nicely. Hi Val, how are you going? Just bear with me a second, darling, while I make sure that my Wi-Fi is all doing the right thing. And it is. Sorry, girls and gentlemen, if there is any. All right. Yep, that'll do. There we go. I am going to do a little scrapbook page for you. Um, I feel like doing something a little bit arty, so figured it was time to crack out some paints and have a bit of a play with the new, all to new palettes that came in over the last week. Um, I have not got my comments turned on. There we go. Um, hey, Amanda. Um, so I yes, wanted to talk to you about Alter New watercolors, um, the difference between the two palettes that are available online, and do a quick, yeah, scrapbook page. So this is the set that arrived a couple of weeks ago. Now these are investment paints. They are gorgeous. You get a lot of value for money with these guys. Um, and you'll notice I did a little time lapse on Facebook uh, not all that long ago showing showing these and how they um, and, and having a bit of a play with them and so this is the colors that come in this set here and they are really really pretty uh, what I like about this is you get quite a good range um, they're not super pigmented meaning they're not super intense um, but they're pretty good and then yesterday, these little beauties arrived. And these ones are a lot more pigmented. So these ones are, they've got a lot more oomph behind them. Their colors are stronger and they are really nice. They're also more expensive. Um, but it comes down to the quality of the paint. So I'm gonna be using these particular paints today on my scrapbook layout. So I'm gonna keep my little book handy because I'm gonna need that. And I'm gonna keep these handy because of course I'm going to need that. Uh, the other thing I wanted to do is I wanted to use the Colour Wheel Dye from Alton New and I wanted to create a page that I saw something similar on Pinterest quite a while ago. Um, not a new idea, but I wanted to have a bit of a play and show you something quick and easy. But I love this die, it's two pieces. So it'll cut a plain circle and it will also cut this color wheel. Um, when I cut, the, cut it out earlier, because I've got some that I cut out off camera, so that you don't have to watch me cutting. But the way that I used it is lined it up on my plate, on my cutting mat, in the two pieces like that. And that is what cut out this gorgeous little piece here. All right, so um, I used my Gemini Junior uh, cutting machine for this and wanted to um, create here's a few little bits so I've cut four four color wheels out um, and I have also cut out a circle so when I cut the circle out because I want to make some color some wedges to go in underneath this color wheel so what I did is I cut out the circle by itself using using just this piece here. And I wanna cut the wedges out. So in order to cut the wedges out, I lined up my die on here. 
and then just did some little pencil marks on each point and a dot in the middle so that and I'm going to do and this is on the back of the paper so it won't matter if I'm marking it um, here we go whoops and then I've got my paper trimmer and I cut from piece to piece so I just worked around cutting my wedges cutting my little pies out of my color wheel to have all of these little wedges that are going to slide in on the back of the color wheel the die cut Now, I figured that was probably the easiest way for me to do it. There was probably lots of other ways um, that might have worked just as well, but um, that worked pretty good for me. So what I have here in front of me is a hot mess. And these gorgeous little wedges. So what I'm gonna do is I've got some plain watercolor paper. So this is 12 by 12, 300 GSM watercolor, watercolor paper. Um, I actually have these available online uh, as a pack. And this is the watercolor paper that I spoke about earlier in my tools uh, video. So what I'm thinking I would like to do is lay these across my page something along these lines something like this and my photo I've got a pretend photo so let's just say for example that this is my photo I think this is six by four let me just measure that up oops sorry move the camera and I've lost my ruler 15 by, oh, that one probably needs trimming just a little bit. Perfect, that'll do. All right, so this is my photograph. So um, I'm just gonna position that one straight in the middle. I may even trim it down a little bit later. So my watercolor paper, I'm going to, um, I'm wanting to color with the watercolors on top of this and I'm going to do that kind of last because what I want to do first is color my little wedges so I'm just going to pop that aside the I've got a little bit of extra watercolor paper here to have a bit of a play with some of these colors and because I have swatched them I've got them here to see I know um, that I'll be able to color them so I'll be able to choose the colors that I want so before I start doing anything I'm just going to wet them with my water spray to make sure that they are all juicy and damp so I'm working with a color wheel today so I think what I might do is I've got three color wheels cut out using the um, using the die so I might do one with yellows so let me have a bit of a play with my yellows, first of all. Oh, that's so pretty. There we go. And I'm just gonna push that up here a bit more and have a bit of a play with these. So it's always good, no matter what you are doing, to have a play with the colors that you're going to use and, and Put them in front of you so you can visualize exactly what your project is going to look like um, there is nothing worse than sticking your brush into something putting a color on your brush and not actually having that color look exactly like you think it does when you go to put it on there so i'm going to start with coloring some wedges in a couple of these colors um, I'm not going to overcomplicate it, but I'm just going to use, I've got a big brush here. I've got a brush that is um, holding a decent amount of liquid. I want it to hold lots of water because watercolour is all about water. It's about making the water move, whoops, 
It's about making the water move and having, um, you know, creating that, that movement and giving a nice imperfect sort of look. That's the look I'm going for. So I'm just mixing a couple of quick colours together, like so, and allowing them to, to um, puddle. So with these, I've got a lot of water on there. When that's the case and you think, oh, you know what, I may have overdone that a little. Because, you know, that's what we do. I've just got a little bit of paper towel and I'm just going to let it wick into the paper towel to take a little bit of that water off. Okay, so then that way it's going to... Um, I've got a little bit more ability to move it around. Okay, so if I go in with another colour, and I've actually just gone for a smaller brush because I was a bit of overkill there with that big brush. Oops. Oh, no. Okay. Crisis, crisis averted. So to get rid of this straight line here that I've got, all I'm going to do is just keep it wet. And I can just move that colour down into here. So you can see how beautiful and bright these Alter New watercolours are. And that is exactly the look I was going for today. I wanted something that was bright and punchy and had a nice amount of pigment behind it. Um, so just moving along, I'm just working in one little colour at a time. And I'm not too fussed about going right to the edges either. I'm after a really loose colouring. I'm not wanting something absolutely perfect, so going right to the edge is not of any interest to me. And I'm just going to let them sit like that. So this is giving me a little bit of a base to start with, um, because I'm going to be adding water as well to my background. So I'm going to do a couple more little wedges. I might just do one more. Exactly the same. So starting with my lightest colour. And having the paper towel handy means that you can take any extra drips off. You can, if you take your, your brush straight out, of your, straight out of your water, you'll be able to just soak a little excess water off into the paper towel. And having clean water the entire time is overrated. <laughs> I never have clean water. Hey Rhonda, thank you for joining. I'm you've just I'm just starting creating a little bit of a a watercolor background using Alter New paints, which are new ones that arrived yesterday, and and um, and their color wheel dye, which I absolutely love. So while I am going to do the next colour, I'm just sliding these guys here off to the side so that they can just air dry and dry naturally. And I'm going to work on my next four segments. So my next four segments, I need to establish what the colours are going to be. So let's have a bit of a play. I reckon I might go with blues. blues this time might do these colors so I'm going to start with this one here is my lightest color this is the the crystal waters no it's not that's the wrong one that's the one I want so testing it first to make sure I'm getting the right colors like that so water coloring is is quite it's not I'm not going to say it's easy I'm going to say that it takes practice but you need to have a little bit of confidence in your own abilities as well. So meaning that you need to give it a whirl, have a bit of a play and go, look, you know what? Stuff it. Let's just commit to it. Oh, gorgeous. All right. Hey there, Kelly. Okay, so now I want to start with, I think I want to start with this colour because it's the lightest colour. So I'm going to go in with that one, in on the tip, and I'm just going to, I'm wetting my brush each time. Definitely the key is the water. It's just water. Don't be afraid of it. It will dry. 
How's everybody's afternoons going? Hey, Susan. It is a lovely day here in Adelaide. It's just come in a little bit overcast. It's a little windy inside my house, I have to say. <laughs> I, um, I'm having a little, um, is that the colour I want next? Yep. Um, I'm having a little carpet drying done. Right, so the next colour that I'm going with is this one here. So just so that I remember which colour that I want, I'm going to put it up in here in the little well. And I'm going to grab from it each time up in the palette. Like that. So then the colours, there's still enough water on here that the colours are not leaving lines, brush lines. They're giving a real puddled sort of effect. Okay, so now I'm going to go in with this really lovely deep, oh, look at that, this deep colour. And I might even be a bit of a rebel and pop a little bit of purple in there. So because I'm not too sure 100% what the purple's going to look like, I'm going to put some up here in my palette like that and I'm going to work from there. And I can use purple because purple and blue are alongside each other on the colour wheel. So it's really quite a, a safe colour to use. Um, I would never mix blue and orange together when they're wet because what happens? We make brown. And brown is not as visually pleasing as we would like. So yes, that's what the, these little holes are in your pan is so that you can um, mix a new colour up in that area you can create a puddle to work with. Oh, that's looking good. And um, you don't need to wipe it when it's dry. You can build on it. And I've just grabbed from those wet puddles on my paper there as well. So this works with lots of different dyes as well. I'm going to be, um, there's lots of different dyes that you can colour and you can add backing to as well. Really, you, you're only limited, like I said before, by your own imagination. So, and now I'm just going to pop the blue ones aside. Pop them off on the side of my mat. All right, I'll get some more little wedges here. One, two, three, four. And now this time I might go towards green. So, I'm loving this one. This one's called Seashore. I'm loving a little rainforest. Um, green Hills. Which one's Green Hills? This one. Perfect. So testing it here first allows me to identify which is my lightest colour. Um, because it's much easier to build colour, as you know, than it is to take the colour out. So I'm just going to go straight in with that lightest colour first. And you can see, like I said before, see how beautiful and bright these colours are. They're very nice. Now I'm going to put this one here in, which is called, what did I say it was called? Green Hills. The other thing that makes a really big difference when you're doing something like this is the, the choice of paintbrush that you choose. I've chosen a round number eight paintbrush. So a round paintbrush means that it's got this lovely soft round tip to it. Oh, this is so nice. Um, this lovely right, this lovely tip to it, which means that it hold lots of, holds lots of liquid. And that's what I want it to do. I want it to hold lots of liquid so that it's got this lovely movement behind it. All right, that one there. So did, did you all watch my, um... My last live was is it was it interesting to learn some bits and pieces about the different tools that I love to use, um, or was that something that a bit of feedback on that? Any ideas? There we go. 
I'm going to do one lot in pinks, I think, guys. I'm pretty sure it's a missing a pink sort of style here. Since I've got some more wedges cut out, I may as well just commit to it. Very handy. Thanks. Okay, so I don't actually have any pinks. Oh, I've got these pinks here. Maybe we could try those. All right, let me just... Oh, goodness me. Hang on. All right, so let's sample the pinks first. Let's go with Cherry Blossom. Oh, Cherry Blossom is beautiful. Um, tea Party is this one. This is almost like a coral sort of red. Um, and I'm thinking it probably needs... Red Cos Cosmos in here as well. So let's have a play with these ones. So my lightest colour, I need to start with that. So again, I've got a nice juicy wet brush and I'm dipping my brush into my water each time. Um, working on watercolour paper, like I said before, the watercolour paper is designed to hold the liquid to be able to move it around. Um, I reckon that colour next. Is that that one? Yep. And then while these are drying in a minute, it, which actually they're almost nearly dry, so. one so have you all enjoyed other um bits and pieces from the great australian craft show have you been to check out any other um fabric people uh if you are called what i call a crossover crafter there is a couple of amazing other exhibitors out there other facebook pages which you can visit my lovely craft wife fiona she has a company called fine french linen um, and Fiona does the most amazingly beautiful fabric um, linen pyjamas. Really, really pretty. Um, I've got a couple of pairs of them myself. Um, but yes, really, really nice products around and for quilters and people who like to sew stuff, which is not me. Um, all right, so I can put this aside. I don't need this. I don't need my little swatch anymore. But what I might do very quickly is I'm just going to dry some of these wedges because I do need to stick them down next to be able to do the next step, I think. Um, so when I'm drying them, I'm going to need my heat gun. Sorry about the camera shake, guys. Um, I'm going to need my heat gun and a pair of tweezers. I nearly said pliers then, a pair of tweezers. So I can do two at a time and they won't take long to dry. You're just taking that extra bit of water off. Dry enough. Um, because if you don't, uh, if you do, if you don't hold them down, they're going to blow away. So we've just had Five big boxes uh, deliveries come in in the last half an hour. So this afternoon and this evening, um, for those of you who have got items on order, you will be contacted. Um, and the, keep an eye out on the new for October on the website. Um, they will be going up in the next few hours. I do have to do a little bit of life as well. But, um, but we will endeavour to get those up as soon as possible for you to see. But there's all sorts. There's new Tim Holtz that have come in. A massive top up of paint. Lots and lots of Christmas items also. Um, Christmas things, as you all know, are 15% off until Sunday. Christmas kits, Christmas dies, Christmas stamps, Christmas embellishments, Christmas embossing paper. All of the Christmas things 
are 15% off. So um, please buy the Christmas things, guys. All right, nearly there. This is the boring bit of watching paint dry. This would be the perfect time to go and make yourself a coffee. Pat the dog. Kiss your husband. Check the letterbox. Jump onto nataliemay.com.au. Do all the things. And I've run out of patience. Okay. So these little bits that are still wet, all I'm going to do is just touch them with my heat. Sorry, not my heat, my paper towel, just to take off that puddle. Because you guys just don't need to sit here and watch paint dry. So they are watercolour paints. So that's the really important thing. So they will dry blotchy. And that is okay. I was, I'm looking for a blotchy look. I'm not looking for perfect by any means. Um, so what I want to do now is I would like to take my colour wheel that I cut out earlier and I'm going to use some puzzle glue to stick these segments behind the, um, the wheel. So the way to do that is I'm just going to make a puddle of glue on my table and spread it out with my finger a little and I'll do the green ones first and I'm just going to run a little a little glue down each side and drop it on my table blah bugger oh gosh and then stick it to the back here so Although it's fiddly, it shouldn't take too long to do. So based on my colour wheel, I probably want to do one here. What am I doing? Colour, one, two, colour, one, two, colour, one, two. Oh, it's an odd number, so I'm just going to have to suck it up. But well, I'm not going to see them all anyway, because my photo is going to cover some up. But just wiping my little segments through the glue is ample. All right. So I have to say this this color palette, these um, these watercolor paints are just divine. So I've got numerous different sorts of watercolor paints available to you online. There is something to suit every budget, which is really important. Um, there are, I've got numerous different brands from Ganzai Tambi, which are the super fancy Japanese ones, through to, there we go. And this glue here is gonna dry clear, but I can just swipe that off with my finger if I need to. Um, so I've got the super fancy Japanese Tambi ones, or Ganzai Tambis. I have the, Art by Marlene ones, which are very nice, her new ones. And I've got two different sorts of ultra new. Um, I also have available, what else have I got available? I have got some, I did have some Prima ones, but I've sold out of those. I don't love the Prima ones. They're not my favorite. They're not as pigmented as they could be. Um, I have to say, I was so very pleasantly surprised with the quality of these ultra new ones. I did not expect them to be as absolutely gorgeous as they are. Um, they're really, really pretty. So just swiping it through, sticking it on the back of my die cut. So conveniently for you guys, until I go to bed tonight... The dies are going to be on special. They are currently 15% off. Bonus.
they are 15% off until the end of today. And tomorrow, there is going to be a new special. So tomorrow's special is going to be... No, I'm not going to tell you. Tricked you. You will just have to um, log on tomorrow morning, check Facebook, have a look at the website, have a look under daily deals to see what tomorrow's special of the day is going to be. And tomorrow's special is only for one day, which means that you need to make the most of that. I'm going to put two of these in because I really like that. Um, so the cool thing as well is that you will be able to add to your current order by selecting no judgment at the checkout. If you do want your order sent straight away, you do need to write in the comments, please send immediately. If not, we will be posting them out uh, next Monday and Tuesday and putting them all together for you. I think that I might go for yellows now. As much as I love the blues, I think I love the yellows and oranges more. So sticky fingers here, but it looks really, really cool. I'm super impressed. Now, I mentioned in my last video about um, when I was talking about adhesives, about the different glues that I like to use. So the glue that I'm using today, the puzzle glue from Poland, I mentioned it's really, really oozy. If you look to the glue on camera at the moment, you'll see that it is dripping out the top. That is what happens because it's pretty much just like toothpaste when you leave the cap off and it goes everywhere. Um, so you do need to either have a surface like this that you can wipe it all up. I mean, I'm not really wasting anything. It's no big drama, but it is a little oozy and a bit gooey and a bit gross. And you have to be willing to get your hands dirty, which is fine because this is paper craft. And that's the whole idea. <laughs> God, having that heat gun on, I've worked up a sweat. Is it warm in here, Louise? Or is it just me having a hot flush? We've got a bit of suburbia happening here. We've got the dogs in the backyard doing their thing. Having Ollie's having a tantrum because we're not letting him in, so he pushes himself up against the screen door like a two-year-old. Ollie's our little bulldog, for those of you who don't know. All right, so gooey, ooey fingers here, but let me just clean this off. I'm going to pop that aside. Pop that aside. I've got these little egg extra segments here. I don't need those. Um, I've got my green segment done. I've got my red segment done. And I'm just giving that a nice little push down. And my orange yellow segment done. So that's really cool. Like that by itself looks pretty, pretty good for a, um, for one die cut. Well, used three times, but you know. You know what I mean. All right. So what I want to do now is I want to put them on my page. So I have my 12 by 12 piece of watercolor paper here. And what I'm going to do before I do anything else is I'm going to tape it down to my page. So I'm going to tape it down to my page. Hopefully I'm just waiting to there we go. So that looks like it's all, like, all in the shot. And I'm using the, uh, the low-tack purple tape. So the low-tack purple tape is exactly that. It will enable me, it will allow me to peel the tape off and not, and not peel the paper off later. Um, it's got a little less tack than perhaps washi tape. Um, it's also going to stop any paper curling if it gets a little bit damp. So popping it on just at the top and the bottom here. 
And now I'm going to think about where my, my bits and pieces are going to go. So I want to put this one here. I like this one because it is lovely and bold. And I'm going to pop that there. And I'm going to pop this one up here, something along those lines. So now I want to add some bits of these colours in and around here. So for that purpose, I'm going to quickly just do a little guideline so I know about where it's going to sit. So a bit of pencil mark underneath on that side. So that is the green. And this one's going to be the red. And I'm going to go down a bit lower with the red. And then the orange. Something along those lines. So I'm going to keep those off to the side here so that I know what colours I've got and what's going where. And actually, no, I'm not going to do it on that side because that is where the water is. And I don't want to end up with too much around my page. Um, Louise, would you be able to change my water for me, please? Thank you. Because that looks like mud. That's what happens when you mix all the colours together. Thank you. So what I want to do is I want to add some splatters behind my colour wheels. I think putting splatters on here is going to be really good. I've got a bit of a guide on where things are going to go. And I can pick it up any time. Um, I can pick it up anytime and work with that. So if I don't want paint everywhere else, I can mask it off using some paper towel. Which I'm going to do. So I'm just going to put some paper towel over that side. And this is the one which is going to have the green. So I'm going to start with the colours that I used. And again, start with the lightest colours. So if you're not sure, you can always make up this little puddle in here to have a bit of a play with. And I'm just going to get a nice juicy little water well. What have I got going on there? And I'm just going to ink splat. Like so. So I call it a smoker's tap. Anybody who used to be a smoker will be incredibly good at this. I was a great smoker back in the day. And now I'm just going to pop a little bit of extra colour in and around. And I can mix these two colours together here. What was the other colour that I used? I went quite deep. Oh, I went light, didn't I? Here we go. Bit of that one. So all of the colours that I use to create my little pie, I need to use in here. Alright, so the next thing I'm going to do is just use a wet brush. There's no colour on this at all. And I'm just going to tie some of these little dots together. So that it's not just a, you know, a, a Jackson Pollock painting. It's more of a little bit of art. It's a bit more colour around the page. But just by using a wet brush makes it a really light tone of the colour that we are using. Okay. So like I was saying before, this is not at all an original idea. This is very, very similar to something one of the Alter New team have created. Um, and this is how you, you create. You find yourself an idea and then you turn it into your own. That is what creating is about. I'm not doing this to impress you. I'm not doing this to impress myself. I'm creating because it is fun. And that is what it should be. And I'm always, if you're going to do something like this, give credit where credit is due. Um, like I said, this is certainly something that... The idea came from one of the amazing Alter New team. So just looking at this, I've got some really dark splatters here. I need to balance that up up here with a few dark splatters as well. And down here, it's, it still has to have a little bit of balance. So then this guy in a moment, 
is going to go like that. Love it. Okay, next, get rid of my puddle. So my next colour to go in here was going to be red, but I don't want to put it next to the green until the green is dry. So I'm going to put the yellow up here now. And that's still drying. So I'm going to work with my palette in my hand so that it kind of protects a little bit of my page. So with the... With this one here, I used yellow and orange. I used these colours here, so I want to do exactly the same thing there. So I've got a little wash of yellow. And I'm just going to pop it into here. And then do the same thing. So I've got a nice juicy brush. And here is my, my guide on where the yellow is. And just going to pop a little wash of yellow there. Then I can do the same thing with the next colour. And Jessica's just got home from school. Say hello to everybody, Jessica. Hi. There we go. And almost bring a dog with you. Didn't do it. Can't believe it's three o'clock already. Mm. All right, so there's some of that deep color that I've wanted. Now I'm gonna go back to using the just plain water just to tie some of these little puddles together so that they're not just, like I said, a Jackson Pollock painting. They need to be a little bit more. There we go. And it ties them together a little bit nicer. I want to add a little bit more of this yellow because I really like it and it's got some beautiful pop to it. Off the door. <laughs> All right. So before I do the red, I'm going to quickly dry it off. Especially the green. So normally I would allow this just to air dry by itself. Um, and I love the way for air dries, it creates a beautiful puddle and it creates lovely lines. So using a heat gun to dry it off will still create the lines, but the air will push it around a bit more. So these beautiful, um, Ultra New Watercolours. So there's, like I mentioned earlier, there's two different styles online that are available. The difference other than the price, you'll notice is um, that there is a big price difference, but they have a different amount of pigment in them. The smaller pan has got a much, much higher element of pigment in the colours and they seem to just be a lot stronger to use. Um, both of them will make fantastic travel packs um, if any of you are traveling the world at the moment. <laughs> yeah, that's not happening, I know. <laughs> um, it's wishful thinking for everyone, isn't it? So that's going to go and sit on top there. Beautiful. All right, so now I'm up to these. So yes, the, um, the colors are gorgeous and the pans, like I said, will just travel beautifully. All right, so this time I want to go with tea party it's called which is this one and that's my lightest color and that's almost like a really watermelon sort of color actually it's absolutely gorgeous so i'm just making up a little juicy puddle and i'm being very careful about my tapping into the green because red and green when they are wet make brown all right, next color I want to add in is going to be this one, I reckon. So again, making a nice juicy puddle. 
And I'm not worrying too much about this one because my photo is also going to go in the middle. And a little bit of depth with cherry blossom. So this is where I can start now just blending some of those colors together. without it looking like um, someone has bled out on the page. Because that's what can happen with reds. <laughs> um, you can get a quite a, a bloodbath sort of look, which is something that I'm definitely not going for. And I'm going up next to the green, but not going on the green. All right, that works for me. So the, the, the key thing with doing something like this, where it's quite creative and quite loose and flexible, is to not be too judgmental on yourself and try and make it absolutely perfect. Nothing about this is perfect, and I'm okay with that. Um, I am a firm believer in creating to make me happy, not you happy. Um, and that has allowed me to create a little bit more confidently, I think. Create for fun. Create for the reason that I'm doing it in the... I started doing it in the first place all of those years ago. All right, so that's still a little bit wet, so I'm just going to use a piece of paper towel, take a little bit of colour, let's take a bit of water off it, sorry. And because it is watercolour, it will take a little bit of the colour as well. But for filming purposes, we will go with that. All right, so now I need to stick this on. So to stick this on, it's going to, I'm going to use um, foam tape. I want it to sit a little higher. Um, I'm going to use two different widths of foam tape. I'm going to use, hello Christine, I see you watching. I'm going to use the 12 mil. Scissors, here we go. I'm gonna use the 12 mil and I'm gonna stick it onto the wide bits of my color wheel. Not going edge to edge never go edge to edge because I might decide to slip something in underneath it that works for me one two three and the other thing is is because my page is still a bit wet it won't actually matter too much if it's foam taped it can dry underneath it so tomorrow's special which will start um, probably from 8 a.m. is is something, and I will be demonstrating with the eye, with the with the products that are on special tomorrow. So, um, I may do, I'll do at least one live Facebook demonstration tomorrow, and show you some cool things. I might do a little art journal page tomorrow, uh, and I may do a scrapbook layout to see how see how the day progresses. Stick, stick, stick. Yeah, there we go. Now it's coming together, and then this one is going to sit like that maybe yes
So I don't need to slather it with glue and double-sided tape. This will eventually go, eventually go into one of my scrapbooking albums. And once it goes into that scrapbooking album, it'll be secure. As long as you use a good quality tape adhesive to stick it all down with, your project should not go anywhere. What are you looking for, Lou? Oh, I'll just pass it. Okay. And that one's gonna go there, there, and there. All right. Excellent. So I'm loving where this is gone. So now I can peel off my tape because it's low tack, it hasn't damaged the paper. And it just gets rolled up and thrown in the corner, in the bin. And I'm gonna bring it up to camera just so you can have a quick look before I stick the photos and the title on. So you can see that I've enhanced those color wheel circles and I'm just going to trim it just a little, just enough and I'll tighten that up later. Um, but you can see that those colour wheels, which is something that's a little bit bizarre and a bit different, looks really, really cool on the page. All right. So, finding a photograph is something that I should have done before I started. So, and a photo mat. Where did my photo mat go? Guys, who can see my photo mat? Found it, stop looking. Okay, because I don't wanna to cover too much of this up, what I think I might do is cut my photo smaller. So, um, normally I would, I would use, start with my photograph and then from there choose my, my papers and my bits and pieces and create my scrapbook layout from the photo down. Um, but for today's purposes, I'm doing it the opposite way. I, am, I haven't printed any photos lately because I haven't had as much time as I would like to create. So, um, but that is changing. Um, so what I'm going to do is just use this. Now, this is my pretend photograph. Um, instead of using double-sided tape, I have a large amount of cardboard at the moment with all of these lovely orders coming in. So I am using cardboard to mount. I am upcycling. Um, what it does, it gives me that extra little bit of height on my pages and it recycles. So I'm going to do that. Can I put two pieces together to give it some height? Stick that one to that one and then just wrap that around there. Wrap that around there and we are good to go. So this is instead of using foam tape to Put my, my put my photo on um, I need it to have height because I have used foam tape to stick up stick on my color wheels that'll do I can't tell if it's straight or not because looking at the screen my camera's crooked so I apologize for that um, okay, so the last thing I want to do with this page is add a title. What I chose to do is pre-die cut some of the new Paper Rose thin, skinny scripts, the fine scripts. So I went with, this is um, Hello and Gorgeous, because no doubt for my page I will find a photo of Jessica and it can be Hello Gorgeous. So... Um, I've pre-cut them and the really great thing is they've got these super fine little words but they also come with these backings so that you can stick them straight over the top. So I reckon I might go with those blues and I'll do, I'm going to leave my words white 
but I'm going to colour the backs blue. going to grab a drink guys sorry won't be a moment okay so if we go with this one we'll start with the lightest color oh look at that gosh that's gorgeous <laughs> and then I might put a darker blue on it as well and the darker blue, I've got my little swatch book here. So I've already put, what's that one called? Crystal Waters. So let's go with the one next to it, which is called Starry Night. Yep. And I want to get rid of this straight line that I've got here. And I just want to allow that to bleed up to it. Now the cool thing here is that my brush is not sopping wet, but I've got enough color on it and pigment on it that it's going to bleed in together. So I end up with this really nice two-tone word, backing for the word. Oh, scrapbook pages take so much longer to do live than normal ones. Arty ones, you can spend too much time watching paint dry, I think. If only I, well, at least I die cut a few little elements first to make it so much quicker. All right, so I just need to dry that off. All right, so I'll bring this up to camera just to show you quickly how that looks. That two-tone, where are we, there, effect. So I've got that blue, at, darker blue at the bottom and the lighter blue at the top. And now I will use the... I'm going to use some Dimensional Magic as my adhesive this time. So... Anyone who has been crafting for a million years like me will be familiar with what Dimensional Magic is. It is a glossy top coat, but it is an excellent glue. And it dries super clear. It's very, very runny. And it has, it's like um, glossy accents, but more fluid. And then this one. I'm just that little puddle is just not this, not big enough. There we go. Louise, can you go inside and get Jessica to ring the physio straight away, please? Because um, I just rejected the call, so they've probably got an appointment for her. Sorry, guys, that you had to listen a bit of bit of life there. Because that's the way. All right. There you go. So I'm going to stick these guys down. Right, back to my layout. Bit of foam tape behind that. Where did my layout go? Here we go. Oh, perfect. Okay, so where do I place this on my page? Because it's all looking pretty amazing. Where I place it on my page is important. Um, first, I put it where you can see it on the camera. There we go. Um, I kind of want to overlap it onto my photo a little. And pop it in that gap. That is where it needs to go. I could come up here as well but I want it to sit underneath where my photograph is going to go. Um, although I don't have a photo yet, what I will do is just pop a little bit of glossy accents on that lip. Like 
like that so it sits up nice and high and then I'm just going to pop some underneath and that will go across the bottom of that photo. So I love that with these dies, you can totally customise them to suit whatever colours you like. And I've got a great range of them online and in stock. And the dies are 15% off until the end of today. So that is a big bonus for you guys. Um, and now just to finish off this layout, what I will do is I will create a, a black doodle border with a black thin pen. The reason I do this is when I put my photograph on, there will be some sort of black element in my photo and I, it will need a little black for depth. So as we know, black and white give it dimension. So I need the black for depth. So just using a, a really thin black pen. Oh, look, my husband's watching. Hey, Trev. Um, using just a thin black pen to draw a line all the way around creates a frame takes takes the perfection off the layout which I don't love the perfection I'm not a huge one for creating perfection but just a, a smooth freehand line creates a nice little frame so just in finishing just to go through and explain what I have done for those of you just tuning in um, the steps that we have taken, I have used a Alter New die, which looks like this, to, I used the Alter New die to create these cut, gorgeous little cutouts, um, cut three of those out, just using plain card, card, crafts, <laughs> plain card stock. Um, I cut some wedges out, which we coloured with the new, ultra new watercolours. Um, we, and then I wedged them behind those. I then used the watercolours to colour those wedges, to colour the background, stick it all together, and we are done. All right, so hopefully... That all made sense. Um, a layout in an hour. I did 15 minutes worth of work before you went, before it went live, just to show you, or just to do a bit of pre-cutting. But that will look great with a photo on it. So what I'll do next is I will grab a photo and place that there, take a photo of this page and pop it up online with the links to the products that we use. Um, but the whole idea here is for you to experiment and create and try something new. So that's using the Alter New die, the brand new Alter New paints that came in, the 24 pan. I also have the 2036 pan available, which looks like this, and comes with a gorgeous little brush. And that color palette is pretty amazing. I love it. Jessica loves it, and that's what counts. <laughs> um, so yeah, they look fantastic. So they're available online at the moment as well. So dyes, 15% off until the end of today. Kits are also available at 15% off until the end of the day. Christmas, 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 Christmas are available until 15% off until the end of the weekend. So thank you guys for tuning in um, on that little scrapbook layout marathon. Um, I hope you've all enjoyed it and had fun. And um I look forward to chatting with you all soon. So have a great day. Wash your hands, kiss your kids and your husband, pat your dog, chat later.